I've been an owner of the new KQI3 Pro for over 6 months. I've put this electric scooter through its paces to find out what's good and bad about it. Is this the perfect scooter for your needs? Find out in this honest review backed by real tests and right data. I'll compare it to popular alternatives from new, Segway and more. Okay, let's start with a quick overview. The KQ3 Pro is a mid-ground between the Sport and Max models. It's intended as a city commuter with a balance between performance, comfort and reliability. It packs a 350 watt motor, a 486.7 watt hours battery, tubeless pneumatic tires and dual disc and regen braking. It weighs just shy of 45 pounds and has a capacity of 265 pounds. And lastly, it has an IP54 weather resistance rating. New advertises a top speed of 20 miles per hour and up to 31 miles of range. Numbers are nice, but how does it perform in the real world? Let's move on to my performance test and see how it is to ride. The KQI3 Pro improves on the KQI2 lineup with enhanced motor power. You have 4 speed modes, zero start, cruise control and speed limiting, so you can really dial in the performance to match your riding style. So top speed. On this channel, no claim goes without testing, so I used GPS performance gear and measured a top speed of 19.7 miles per hour. For reference, all tests are done by me at 175 pounds, so you can expect individual numbers to follow with your weight. The KQR3 Pro finds itself in nice company, outpacing the 9-bot G30P, KQI2 Pro and both turbo end models. Those longing for a bit more speed may want to look at the KQI3 Max, which is notably faster, around 3 miles per hour. So next I tested the acceleration. Averaging 15 miles per hour in just 4.82 seconds, the scooter feels zippier and more responsive than most competitors. The reason it's so much faster off the line is that new uses 48 volt batteries as opposed to 36 volts in most competitors. This means the motor can draw more power at once. Another thing I really love about the 48 volts battery is that it holds its performance much longer into the charge. Whereas 36 volt scooters start to get sluggish below 50% charge, this scooter keeps its sing until you're very far into the battery cycle. I really felt the difference when swapping out the G30P for this scooter on my daily commute. So how does the KQI3 Pro handle hills? I tested it on a 250 foot incline with an average grade of 8%. I completed this climb in 24.4 seconds, which is much better than the KQI2 Pro and Segway G30P. I also tested it on the steepest hill in my city, which peaks at 17% and the KQI3 Pro just barely made it to the top. I'd say that 17% is indeed the max climbing angle. The KQI3 Max is much better on hills though, so it may be a better pick if you have steep hills on your commute. Alternately, you can also consider the Fluid Horizon or Mosquito, but they aren't as well designed in my opinion. All in all, solid motor performance. The KQR3 Pro benefits from its 48 volt setup and is one of the zippier commuting options in its class. For most riders who don't have to battle steep hills, it's more than enough and the performance retention is just great. The new KQR3 Pro has 486.7 watt hours of battery capacity. They advertise a max range of 31 miles, but if you're familiar with the industry, you'll know that you typically get 60 to 80% of that in the real world. As far as capacity goes, it's a big step up from the KQI2 Pro, but it's still behind the KQI3 Max and 9-bot G30P. Capacity is one thing, but how does it perform in the real world? I ran three range tests at varying speeds to understand just how far this scooter will go. In the first test I went full throttle, this got me 17.9 miles of range. In test 2, which is medium speed, I got 23.5 miles and with conservative riding in test 3, I got 26.9 miles on a single charge. Honestly, I'm quite impressed. Now I did the exact same range tests on the competitors. This scooter can't quite keep up with the G30P or KQI3 Max, but it's a big step up from the KQI2 Pro and Turbo and X7 Max. Interestingly, it's on par and sometimes better than the Turbo and V8 despite having a smaller battery. This just goes to show that capacity alone isn't everything, ride efficiency matters. All in all, the battery performance is solid. The fact that this scooter runs 48 volts makes a world of difference, especially when you get below 30% battery as it'll perform really well until it runs dry. 
Realistically, most riders can expect 20 to 25 miles, depending on how you ride and your weight. For riders above 220 pounds, expect somewhere between 15 to 20 miles per charge. The KQR3 Pro is incredibly smooth to ride. Despite not having a suspension system, everything is designed close to perfection in my opinion. First off, we have the beefy 9.5 by 2.5 inch tubeless tires. I find that they are the perfect size for the scooter, and if you pair them with tire sealant, you won't have to worry about tire pressure before every single ride. Now these are what I would consider street tires, but I found that the scooter handles the occasional hard pack trail very well. Braking is another area where the KQR3 Pro really excels. With two disc brakes and electronic regen braking, you've got more stopping power than you need. I managed a stopping distance from 15 miles per hour in just 10.4 feet, which puts all competitors to shame apart from the bigger brother. Not only that, the electronic regen braking is super smooth. There isn't any notable input lag and it doesn't feel jumpy like many of the poor implemented regen brakes do. I also love that you can dial in the strength in the app. So in my opinion, the spacious dimensions, the optimal geometry and a clean elevated design are what truly makes the KQR3. It has a roomy deck that rises at the back, so it acts almost like a footrest and the deck is padded for a strong yet soft grip and it's easy to clean without sacrificing durability. One unique thing about the KQR3 is its ultra low ground clearance. In fact, it's among the lowest I've ever measured. Some will see it as a weakness, and while that's true if you're jumping curbs, it gives the scooter a very low center of gravity. When testing it, I instantly noticed just how easy and smooth it is to maneuver and corner, and that's largely thanks to the low deck. This is one of those scooters that you could pretty much ride one-handed without losing balance, although you shouldn't. It's just overall much better handling than deck mounted battery options which have a skewed center of gravity. The cockpit is really nice as well. The extra wide handlebars accommodate riders of all sizes and with a deck to handlebar height of 39.4 inches, it pretty much hits the sweet spot for riders between 5'5 and 6'5. I also really like the handles. I like that they aren't too thick, it's really nice for someone like me who often rides with gloves due to cold weather, and this can sometimes put strain on my hands if the grips are too large. The overall appearance is clean without cluttery cables, and the centered dot display is large and visible even in bright sunlight. The throttle is a winner as well, there's no lag and the acceleration feels really linear, and a small detail I just like is that it's angled towards the right to get it closer to your thumb. The KQR3 Pro weighs 44.8 pounds, so it isn't the most lightweight scooter on the block, but despite that, it does everything right to make it portable. It has possibly the best folding mechanism I've tested on an electric scooter. It's super easy to use and it has a secondary pin for extra safety. It easily hooks to a click release mechanism at the rear of the deck. The stem is also centered with the deck when folded, unlike on the Segway G30P, which makes it easier to carry. With the press of a button, the mechanism releases again and it's super simple to operate without using excessive force. I also found that the button is more conveniently located than on the KQR2 Pro and the stem itself is just incredibly stable. There's no wiggle or play whatsoever and it's also easy to tighten or loosen the mechanism if needed. All in all, not the lightest but still very good. This scooter is designed to an incredibly high standard. I've simulated wear and tear and ridden hundreds of miles through rough road and weather conditions and I have only had one minor issue. All the small details add up, from the sizable dimensions and clean cockpit to the low center of gravity for excellent handling, this is just a scooter you can count on. There's a reason New backs this scooter with a 265 max load capacity and two years of warranty. If it were just a part spin scooter plagued by issues, they'd be seeing red numbers all over. It's really nice to see a solid metal kickstand for once. It feels anchored in the deck and doesn't have the same loose flimsiness that haunts the entry-level scooter segment. The rear fender light is the only apparent build issue I've come across. It rattles a bit on my scooter, which is annoying, and after doing some research, I found that I'm not the only one who's experienced this. It's more of an annoyance rather than a problem, but it seems to affect some units and there's no clear way to address it. However, the light setup as a whole is pretty good. The high mounted front light is super bright without being intrusive. You can angle it down to better illuminate the road without blinding other road users. It has reflective stickers on each side of the wheels and three high mounted reflexes. 
The tail light is bright as well, but I would have loved to see turn signals, although it looks like we're getting that with the next generation of new scooters. All in all, the structural integrity is just really good. I rarely feel as confident and safe on an electric scooter as with the KQR3s, and contrary to many, I really like the app connectivity. It allows for in-depth statistics, a better overview of your battery, and over-the-air firmware updates to improve the ride quality over time. I do agree, however, that it's a bit annoying that the scooter can't be set up without the app as some people just want to ride. Still, in that case, it's a 10 minute set and forget. Overall, incredibly well built. All in all, I can highly recommend the new KQI3 Pro, especially if you can catch it on a sale. There's so much done right with this design and it strikes a good balance between performance, ride quality and durability. In my opinion, it's an excellent city commuter, high in value, and with two years of warranty, you won't be left behind in six months if you run into any issues. If you're looking for a better ride quality, you'll have to pay significantly more for a scooter like the Segway Max G2, so the KQI3 definitely has a warranted place in the market. The only issue I came across was the rattling tail light, and though it's not as light as some alternatives, the folding mechanism is still S-tier, making it reasonably portable. That's a wrap for this review. If you're considering the KQR3 Pro or any of the other models mentioned, feel free to use our affiliate links in the description. This supports the channel and allows us to buy new scooters to test and review in the future. There are some nice coupons there as well. Drop a comment below on your thoughts about the KQR3 Pro and any scooters you'd like us to review next. Thanks for watching and supporting eRideHero.